The Egyptian Theater opened in 1927, a time when Charlie Chaplin was one of the biggest names on the silver screen. And the jazz singer was making history at the box office. These days, the theater looks much like it did back then, which may be the draw for one of its most devoted visitors. It's not been a bad experience. It's just been an alarming one. Tom Corthen is the house manager of the Egyptian. He's not only seen what many have also apparently witnessed, but unlike most, he's also felt it. It was like a hand just touched my leg. Corthen's often apprehensive about reliving the experience, though he says it's something he can't deny. It's more than interesting. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I don't know if there's words to explain it, really. I mean, it's just that you try not to think that there was nothing there, but you've actually seen and something has actually touched you, and you know apparently there's something. It's the reason that Marie Cuff and her band of ghost hunters from the Idaho Spirit Seekers are here. Can you let us know that you're here? Can you make a noise for us? Some ask questions, others take pictures. One man even follows the crew with a thermal sensitive camera. If there is something here, Cuff is hopeful at least some of the equipment will record it. The questions continue. Why do you remain here? One question seems to get a reply. Listen very closely. Is there a reason you're still here? It's called electronic voice phenomenon. After boosting the volume of a digital recording, Ghost hunters like the spirit seekers say they often get a response. Is there a reason you're still here? But sometimes seeing is also believing. Did you see somebody up there in the projection room? I saw I saw a person up there. Let's go. And then it was gone. After a short time spent on the makeshift stage built above the theater's organ, I have to admit I saw something the shape of a man standing in the projection booth. The doors of the booth were locked, the room void of life. As the spirit seekers investigated, I stayed glued to the stage alone, giving someone else the chance to possibly witness what so far only I had seen. Dan was standing up there on the stage, and off to his left, I had just I had turned my camera off so I could sit here in the dark. And there, off to Dan's left side, right in the center of that piano outline, it looked like someone else was standing there with him. Needless to say, I quickly left the stage. Tom Corthen says these are the types of experiences he's had on several occasions, and they always leave him wondering just who this ghost might be. The only thing you could think of was maybe possibly a projectionist that might have worked here that, you know, enjoyed their job. In order to help us answer that question, we brought in local clairvoyant David Akins. Well, there is definitely uh, a male upstairs and he wanders the building. He also, um, he does like the projection room. This interview was recorded on a different day than the ghost hunt, giving Akins little to no information up front, but instantly he confirms a theory that the ghost was a former projectionist, as well as some chilling information known only to the spirit seekers and myself. Has he, um, has he ever, ever tried contacting anyone here? Oh, anyone? many times. How does he do it? Many, many times. He touches them. It was like a hand just touched my leg. As for those who might have seen the ghost that night? He's telling me two people saw him. No. I, saw, I saw a person up there. It was as solid as Dan was standing there. His name is very simple, very basic. It's like Joe or something with two initials. You know, for example, like DJ or JJ or something of that nature. Um, a very happy man. According to Akins, this man worked at the Egyptian in the early 1930s. For about 18 years, he ran the projector and did general maintenance until he died of a possible heart attack in the 1950s. Aiken says the man loved his job and means no harm during his occasional visits. Even after spending a few hours here in the middle of the night, Marie Cuff says she got the same feeling, ghost or not, this is not a scary place to be. I didn't get that at all the whole time we've been in here. It's been very comfortable and peaceful. But one thing she says is for sure. It's haunted. 